Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I got another email from a viewer with a question. He says, Hello, Mr. McAuliffe. I really love your Avid tutorials, and now I have a question. Is there a way to create countdowns within Avid's Media Composer? I know you can do it with After Effects, but someone asked me to create an 18 hour countdown. Wow, that's pretty long. They won't need the whole 18 hours. Well, that's good. Just certain parts of it, but I think it would be ridiculous to create an 18 hour countdown in After Effects or go into After Effects every time and create a new countdown with the parts that they need. So is there a way to create a countdown within Avid's Media Composer or is there a plugin that can handle the job? Thanks a lot, Patrick. Well, Patrick, believe it or not, there is actually a way to create countdowns within Avid's Media Composer, but it's a manual process. But once you see how easy it is to set up, it's really there's really sort of a little bit of you know work at the beginning and then just sort of setting up the minutes and the hours is actually very simple. So what I'm going to do is show you how to quickly create a countdown for a minute because at the end of the day that's really the part that requires the most work. Changing minutes and changing hours is very simple but it's that countdown from one minute that's going to be tricky. But once you see how simple it is to create and set up and I'm going to set it up in a very specific way so that it's going to be a mat key that you can use it on anything you want. Once you see how simple this is, I guarantee you're not going to want to leave the comfort of your Media Composer timeline. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously Command and Tab for all my Mac friends out there. And I'm going to need to open my sequences bin here. And I'm also going to need to open my graphics bin because we're going to have a lot of graphics here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is come up to Clip and we're going to come down to New Title. You might have a shortcut for this already in your Composer window or on your keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the standard title tool here. And since I'm going to be opening and closing it quite a bit, I'm just going to persist for now to stick with the standard title tool. Now, to be, to be perfectly honest, as far as picking a font goes, that's really personal choice. But for me, I always like to stick with a font uh, sort of like a digital looking font when I create these countdowns. And the one that I like to use is Digital Dream. That's the font. And you can actually Google it. It's a free download. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to type in zero appropriately enough because that's how we're going to start. We're just going to be counting down, like I said, from the one minute mark all the way down to zero. Actually, I'm going to start at 59 seconds and I'll sort of work my way back from there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select that. I'm going to type in Digital Dream. There we go. And let's not make it bold and let's make it fairly big here. Let's make it about 250. I think that's pretty good. Now, obviously, you're going to want to adjust the size of these numbers based on how much you actually want to have this count down. Like, because I'm only counting down really sort of from a minute, I don't need them to be that small. But obviously, if you're going to be counting down from eight hours, like Patrick had asked, uh, you're going to want to make these a little bit smaller. But I think this is okay. Now, what's important to keep in mind with each one of these uh, digits that we're going to create, we want to make sure that they are right justified. What I'm going to do is just move it over to the right-hand side of the frame, and I'm actually going to co uh, I'm going to copy it and paste it, and just slide it over here. And then what I'm going to do is do that one more time: copy and paste, and slide it over. I want to leave a little bit more space here because I'm going to put the the colon in here. And the funny thing about the colon with Digital Dream here, just bring it right over here, just double-click on it, select it, is that it doesn't really look very digital at all. But that's okay for the purpose of what we're doing. What I could even do if I wanted to is I could even make shapes and just sort of make squares to put in here if I wanted to. But this is going to be sort of our standard template. What I'm also going to do here is just turn off the video background just like such. And I'm going to save this out. So what I'm going to do is just hit save. We're going to call this, uh, let's just call this main count down from one min. There we go. And of course, we're going to put this into our graphics bin. I'm simply going to say save, and let's work on just the seconds for right now. What we're going to do is we're going to work on our countdown from 10. So we're actually going to start at 9 and go down to 0. So what I'm going to do is just mark an endpoint here. I'm going to hit plus 10 seconds. Now by doing that, it's actually going to take me to 10 seconds and 1 frame. So I'm just going to step back a frame, mark that as my out point. And what I'm going to do is hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit this into, appropriately enough, a new sequence. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and we're going to jump down one second and I'm going to add an edit. Now if you don't have add edit shortcutted on your keyboard, for me it's F6. You can always find add edit right here at the top of the timeline. But like I said, I have it mapped to F6 on my keyboard. Then we're going to go down another second, F6. Now it doesn't really matter about the audio, so I'll just keep going here. Plus one, plus one, plus one. And obviously what I'm doing 
is I'm creating different titles. Even though it's one title that's all broken up, I'm actually creating different titles here that are, that are going to be updated. Now let's step into our first title here. And we're going to start at nine seconds. Now because we have everything left justified, this is actually going to work out exactly the way we want it to. So we're going to set this number to nine. I'm just going to close the title tool here. We'll save that out. There we go. And now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is just quickly edit this in so I don't have to go through and keep deleting it, all, those, uh, all of these every time. And all we're going to do is just count down from 9 to 0. Now you'll see why I said to persist because I don't want to be constantly saying, yeah, let's go into the standard title tool. So we're just going to do that and hit save. Now like I said, this is probably the most cumbersome of the entire part of the process here is really this part of the countdown because it's what's changing most often. But as you'll see, once we have it set up, it's actually going to be fairly easy to do our countdown for a minute here. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that I'm using version 6.5.2.1. Now if you haven't updated yet, I always encourage people if you're running 6.5 to update to 6.5.2.1. Obviously fixes a lot of bugs. What's also important to keep in mind is that because I am using version 6.5, I do have the ability to right-click on a title and say Edit Title. Now, if you aren't updated to the newest version of Media Composer here, the way you're going to have to update this title or edit this title is to simply step into Effects Mode here. Now, sometimes the title tool can be a little bit finicky. What I'm going to do is just do that again here. There we go. Save. We go perfect. Now, like I said, if you don't have Media Composer Symphony updated to the most recent version, you might actually have to step into effects mode and say edit title right here. But because I'm using the most recent version of Media Composer, I don't actually need to do that. I can simply just right click and say edit title. So what we're going to do now is just put in our last couple numbers here for our seconds countdown. So there's two. And we're going to go to one and then to zero. And here's zero here. And what we're also going to want to do here is just sort of set up everything else. Now I say everything else, and you'll see our title tools being a bit finicky again here. No worries, I think it's just because I'm working a little bit too fast here. Nothing wrong with being a little bit too fast. I've never heard a client complain about that at least. Okay, so what we now have is we now simply have a countdown, nothing fancy, that just counts down from nine to zero. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer by hitting Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. And I'm going to come back to my main countdown. Now you're going to see that it's taken all of these uh, titles that I have updated and stuck them in sequences. And I'm just going to leave them there for now just so that I can easily keep track of things here. And what we're going to do is just take our main countdown just like such. And I'm going to edit this onto Video Layer 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to again right click and I'm going to say Edit Title. Now what's important to keep in mind about this here is that we don't need this last number because we have our countdown going on. And right now I'm just going to leave both of these characters in here because really the only thing that I'm going to be adjusting is this character right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this 5. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually turn on the video background because I want to see through this to the bottom layer because that's where my countdown is actually happening. So I'm just going to close this up. I'm going to say Save. And what I basically have now, and you see, did it did I actually do that here? Let's go back in here and double check. Uh, we want our video background. There we go. That's exactly what we want. I'm just going to close that up. And now basically what we have is our countdown start from 59 to 58, 57, 56. And you sort of get where I'm going with this. So what I need to do here is I need to select all of this here. We're going to copy this into the preview window. And we're going to edit it in. So we've already got five. So we need to go four, three, two, one, zero. And what we're going to do, you'll see if I come back here, I now have 50s. We're going to edit title. And of course, we're going to update this one too. Let's just make sure I'm updating the right thing here. There we go. Always a good idea to make sure you are updating the right thing. So we go to the 40s. And then of course, we go to the 30s. So you'll see, really, like I said, the hardest part was actually setting up that initial countdown. We're actually into the 30s now, not the 40s. We just did the 40s. Here we go. Save. Okay. And so we got the 30s. This is going to be the 20s. So 
And you see, like I said, this is actually very easy to set up. And really, the minute is the hardest part, because this number is going to change now once every minute. So that's going to be very easy to get set up here. So now we're into the tens. Let's close this up. And of course, the last number we want to put in is 0, just like such. So now, basically, what I've just created in a span of a couple minutes is a countdown from, essentially, from a minute. Very, very cool. OK, so what I want to do now is I want to take this and I want to add it on top of some footage. So how am I going to do that? Well, what I always sort of encourage is once you've got your entire countdown ready to go. Now, in Patrick's case, he's going to want to get in and want to make these numbers adjustable. So what he's going to want to do is he's going to want to take this sequence. I'm going to call it, I'll call this main countdown layered. OK, and what I can do now is come back to my graphics bin. And what I like to do to sort of keep track of what I have going on in my graphics bin as far as which one is my actual main element, I actually like to label it with red. So this way, when I stick the rest of the graphics in there, you know what? I always know which one is the main one, even though they're all called the same thing, by what color has selected here. So what I'm going to do is just close that for a second here. I'm going to duplicate this. We're just going to call it Final Composite. Okay. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this countdown, we're going to select the entire thing, and I'm going to mix it down. I want to have one video clip. So we're going to say mix down. I've closed the graphics bin, so I'll just stick it into sequences for right now. I'll just simply say OK. Now the reason that I've done this on black is that I want to be able to get in and position this countdown really anywhere that I want it to go. I tempted to do this in the title tool, making it small and positioning it. If, if the client comes back and says, you know what, you need to change that, you got to go in and adjust every title, and we don't want to do that. What I'm going to do here is just open the graphics bin. We'll stick this mix down in the graphics bin. And I think what we're going to do here is I have my new final composite, and I'm just going to grab a bunch of clips here. Now, let me just see what I have open here. So, okay, so I've got some motocross footage here. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to take some motocross footage, and we're going to put a minute of it in. Why not? So there's our final composite. I'm just going to drop that in. Just grab another clip here. Drop that in. doesn't even really matter what it is here. As long as in the end it totals out to a minute. I think this might do the trick. There we go. Perfect. So what do I have now? Do I have a minute's worth of stuff? Let's see. We've got 59.29, which in our case is going to be close enough. Okay. So a couple things that we need here now. The first thing that we're going to need is our countdown. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back, grab our countdown here. I'm going to position it over here inside of my uh, preview window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new layer. There we go. And I'm just going to actually edit this onto Video Layer 3, just like such. So there's our countdown. And what I need is I need this countdown to be in white. Most people would think that I'm going to do this as a Luma key, but I'm not. I'm going to do this as a Mac key, and you're going to see why in just a second. So what we're going to do again, we're just going to go back to the Title tool here. And we're going to take a white screen, just like such. There we go. Just save this out. We'll stick this into graphics. We'll just call it, appropriately enough, white. I'm going to say save. There we go. We're going to take this. You'll see it's two minutes long. And I'm just going to drop this into video layer two, just like that. So what I basically have now is I have my what's going to be my matte key. I've got my white layer. And then I have my footage. So what I'm going to do now is simply hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. I'm going to come all the way down to the key section right here. And I'm simply going to take Mac key, and I'm going to drag it and drop it right down here onto our countdown layer. And you're going to see that we now have the white that's not cut out, and the black has been cut out. Well, that's because what I need to do here is come into this Mac key effect. And all I'm going to do is simply say Invert Key. And there's our effect right there, looking very sharp. OK, now the only thing that we need to do now is a couple things, actually, is we need to position this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to promote this to 3D, and you're going to see why I'm promoting it to 3D in just a second. What we're going to do now is position this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come to scaling. We're going to scroll this down. I'm just going to scale this down. And I also want to come in, and I want to turn on my safes, just like so I can position this in the lower right-hand corner. Now, the reason that I promoted it to 3D and didn't just do this inside the Mac key effect is I'm going to move this over here to the lower right-hand corner, 
and I can actually delete this keyframe because I don't need that keyframe, is because what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to actually be able to add a drop shadow to it as well. And I have the opacity at 100. We're just going to put the position on the X at 1 and on the Y is minus 1. So what I basically now have, if I come back, is a countdown leader from one minute. Very quick, very simple. And this, of course, if I speed it up here, will count all the way down right to zero. Very cool. So I hope this tutorial has shown you that getting in and creating something like a countdown inside a Media Composer of Symphony is not only easy, but guess what? It's free. You don't have to go looking around for a plugin that you have to buy that you're going to you know, be able to use to create this effect. Granted, at the end, I decided to do a mix down because I wanted to be able to get in and position this where I wanted to. Why did I do that? Well, I did that because doing this in the title tool, if the client comes back and wants a change, I got to go in and I have to adjust every single title. You know, if I had the position all set and everything, but doing it this way, if the client now says, you know what, Kev, nah, lower right, don't want it there. Upper left is where I want it. Oh, okay, sure, no problem. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to step in. I'm just going to grab it, repo it up here to the upper left-hand corner. I don't need this keyframe again, so I'm just going to delete it. I'm just going to hit play now, and guess what? It's now in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, what, you want it to be a little bit bigger? Oh, okay, no problem. You know what? Let's come in. Let's just put it at, oh, I don't know, 45. And I'm just going to move it over here a little bit. Again, don't need that keyframe. Let's just delete it. Step out, hit play. Remember, if I had done this in the title tool, I'd have to go in and adjust every single title. Doing it as a Mac key gives me unbelievable flexibility to get in and alter this end product however the client needs me to. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.